Our State of the U.S. segment tonight, a small change to the WhiteHouse.gov website had the media in a frenzy last week. CBS declared moments after Donald Trump became president, the White House's LGBT rights page disappeared. The page was actually titled President Obama and the LGBT Community, and the reality is that most pages from the old Obama administration website were removed. But the media, of course, wants to use this as an opportunity to portray President Trump as a bigot. Joining me now, President of the Log Cabin Republicans, Gregory Angelo. Gregory, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me back, Liz. All right, Gregory, let me ask you about this. The LGBT page uh, of President Obama's was erased from the WhiteHouse.gov, the new WhiteHouse.gov website, I should say, President Trump's. Why all the fuss about this? Uh, because the left will do what they do. I mean, you know, three words, stop the histrionics. Good Lord, you know, the way that they're freaking out uh, really doesn't back up the fact that we have in Donald Trump someone who could well be not just the most pro-LGBT Republican president in history, but the most pro-LGBT president that we've had in history. I mean, this is a man who enters the White House being the first president of any major political party who have, to have already attended a same-sex wedding and who believes himself that marriage equality is not only settled law, but the law of the land. So people are disregarding that and freaking out over a website. And I would just add that if your self-worth and validity comes from the existence of a web page, there is no web page that is going to fix the problems that you have. Particularly a web page from the government. If you need a government website to That's validate right. yourself, I would just take it one step further. No, I'm glad you brought that up, though, about President Trump, because I saw this over the weekend at the Women's March. So many of their signs were accusations of homophobia within uh, uh, addressed to President Trump here. And it didn't make any sense to me because President Trump is the first president, not Republican, not Democrat, the first president of the United States to enter the White House supporting gay marriage, or at least not opposing it. Even President Obama, when he was elected, opposed That's gay right. marriage. That's right. Not only does Trump enter uh, supporting uh, uh, marriage equality as the law of the land, but he's making history in doing so. You know, I'd point out that you know, the left it was more than happy to get out there, and the LGBT left in particular was more than happy to celebrate wearing and wearing Obama hats and Obama t-shirts in 2008 when Barack Obama entered the White House as a president who believed marriage was between one man and one woman, and they are haranguing log cabin Republicans members and people in the LGBT community who happen to be wearing Make America Great Again hats in support of our 45th president. The disconnect is staggering, but not surprising. Right, it's, it's completely hypocritical, but they just refuse to see it. And I would just, one final note here before we move on to something else, is President Trump and his team, by removing this page from their whitehouse.gov webpage, they're not erasing history. President Obama, uh, after a few years at least, championed gay marriage. It passed. That's not something that was on President Trump's platform. And typically, the whitehouse.gov pages uh, are, are sectioned by the policies that they campaigned on or that they're championing. So there's not erasing history. You can go to obama.whitehouse.gov and it's still there for everyone to see. But right. Gregory, let me ask you about this. The Log Cabin Republicans uh, presented a white paper to President Trump about, uh, about gay rights issues that they would like addressed under pr uh, President Trump's administration. Talk to me about that. Sure. In particular, we presented the Trump transition team with a white paper, a document outlining the reasons why it would be important and right for President Trump to maintain a longstanding executive order policy uh, in his White House, preventing individuals from uh, being fired or judged based on their sexual orientation or gender identity, and uh, preventing discrimination in federal contractors on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. This is a policy that goes back decades, uh, originated under President Lyndon Johnson, and has been maintained under both Democratic and Republican presidents, including uh, Richard Nixon uh, and George W. Bush. We think that if, the, uh, if President Trump maintains this policy, not only is it the right thing to do, but it would send a strong signal to these LGBT chicken littles who are out there just looking for any reason to demonize our nation's president, uh, a signal that he is actually the real friend of the LGBT community that he campaigned to be uh, during uh, his run for the presidency. Ryan, let me push you on this just a little bit. You say there's a uh, precedent. Republican and Democratic presidents have all, uh, have all taken part in this. Is there any expectation that Trump would not do this? I don't know. I mean, uh, President Trump had said while he was campaigning that he would rescind 
all of President Obama's unconstitutional executive orders. Now, whether or not he believes uh, this executive order, uh, which was slightly amended under President Obama to include gender identity, is unconstitutional, uh, is, is something that is yet to be determined. And we have taken, we're taking nothing for granted with a President Trump, but I think it's important to point out that while the LGBT left was out there demonizing Trump, talking about that they are going to, as the human rights campaign is saying now, defy Donald Trump in every way, we were the ones that were actually talking with the incoming administration. We were in dialogue with the, with the, the, president, uh, the incoming president of the United States, President Trump and his team, advocating on behalf of the LGBT community, while the LGBT left was conjuring demons and fundraising off of them. Right, right. Kind of a stark difference there and a telling difference. Let me ask you this, Gregory, before we run out of time here, and I'm asking you this specifically as the president of a gay Republican organization here. What does your organization feel or what is your organization's stance on the freedom to say no? And I'm not talking about in the personal sense here. I'm talking about the cake bakers or the photographers or the florists who said because of their personal religious convictions, they did not want to take part in same-sex wedding ceremonies. They were then told by the government that if they did not do that, they had to shut down their business. Some of them lost their businesses or were, or were sued. This has become kind of, these examples have become pivotal examples in the fight for religious liberty. Where does your organization stand on this? Log Cabin Republicans takes a unique stand in that we support uh, non-discrimination, LGBT non-discrimination non legislation that includes reasonable protections for churches and religiously affiliated nonprofit organizations. You know, I, I think that when it comes to the cake baker, the photographers, etc., um, there is an obligation that people have when they uh, are serving a business that is supposedly open to the public to doing that, serving the public and baking a cake is not the same thing as celebrating or condoning a wedding. I would actually point people to uh, you know, the, um, the advice that other Republicans during the campaign had given, and that was just, just bake the cake. Um, right. you know, I think there, there right. are but you, uh, you understand big, there, there is a difference to worry here. about in that regard. Right, there is a difference here, I think, between saying, you know, say a, a gay man walked into the bakery and said, oh, I want a donut for breakfast, and the, the owner of the shop was like, no, you're gay, I'm not going to give you a donut. There's a very, very big difference between that and between saying, you know, you want, you want a cake with two men on the top. I, you know, the owner says, I disagree with that on my religious convictions. I feel that that is validating or condoning something that is against my conscience. I mean, those are two very different things that I think have been quite blurred. I, I understand that, and, and I, I definitely understand the idea of um, uh, preventing government coercion in, in that regard. Um, I think that there is, there's a balance that needs to be struck. We have yet to see what that balance looks like legislatively. I would just add that you know when the federal government or state governments are suing grandma and grandpa, and they're, they're suing nuns, uh, you know, as, as they have in the past, it's, it's not the place that I think we wanted to be in general as an LGBT community, as an LGBT rights movement, regardless of your political affiliation. I think that balance needs to be struck, and we're going to continue to push for striking that balance. Right, and, and I would agree with you on the point that it, it, it's the government at fault here in the sense that the government shouldn't be uh, forcing anybody to do anything, whether it's the nuns, whether it's the bakers. I mean, that, that's not the role of the federal government, and that's the scary part to me. Gregory, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was great to talk to you.